In the last video, we looked at how we could store a user's logged in authentication token into local storage. This is so that they don't have to log in every time they refresh the page or come back. We can remember that they're logged in and use the token in local storage. In the last video, we used ports to store the token, sending it from Elm to JavaScript. And here we're going to write some JavaScript that can send the token into Elm when the app loads, so we can use that token if the user is already signed in. To do this, we're going to make use of a feature in Elm called Flags. Flags is data that you can send in when you run your application for the first time, when you initialize your Elm app. And this is a great way of sending in external data, such as a token from local storage. So we're going to go up to our type alias for flags. And I've just said it's an empty record because we don't currently have anything. But we're now going to have a field, and it's going to be called stored token. And it's going to come through from JavaScript as a string. You see now if I refresh in the browser, we have a problem. Elm is telling us that the flags we're expecting aren't happening, and therefore it's not booting our application. This is quite a nice feature of Elm, even though the flags are coming from JavaScript, so therefore can't be as typed and as guaranteed as they could be in the Elm world, it does prevent your app from running if the flags are incorrect, so you never get your app running without the correct data you expect. So for this we need to go to where we call elm.main.init, and we need to pass in flags. And for now I'm just going to pass in the stored token, and we'll just set it to the string hello, just for now. Now let's go and look at how we can use this store token in our Elm. So when the init function gets called, it gets called with the flags. So let's just log that out and see that it's there. So I'll say underscore equals debug.log flags, flags. Now in the browser, you can see that the flags indeed has the store token and it's set to hello. Let's now go and write some JavaScript to actually pull the value out of local storage. So in here, I'm going to say local storage dot get item. I'm going to use our special key, the distinctly average key. And that's it. it, only takes one argument, which is the token. So you see now we have the store token and it's correctly set to our string. But let's see what happens if I remove the token from local storage. So you can do this by going into the application part of the uh, DevTools and just hitting the thing and hitting backspace on it to remove it. Let's see what happens when I refresh now. You see we get a problem. The problem is as Elm saying that the value is null and we're expecting a string. This isn't good. This would be a valid place for a user to be if they're visiting our app for the first time they won't have a token in local storage. So we need to make sure we deal with this case. Luckily, there is a simple fix to this. Rather than telling Elm that we expect the store token to be a string, we can tell it that it's maybe a string. This tells Elm that the value might be missing. And Elm is smart enough to know that if the JavaScript value is null or undefined, it will treat that as nothing, else it will take it and wrap it in a just for us to give us this maybe. So now in the browser, you can see the store token is nothing. Let's log in and just make sure that if we have one, it gets set correctly. So I'll go to slash auth, just wait for us to be redirected. And you can see the flag still says nothing in the token, which was expected because we didn't have one. We then signed in and we've stored the token locally. So let's refresh the page now. I'm just going to go to the index route. And you can see now that the flag is that token we just had. So we've now got it stored locally. So now we're able to deal with the user having a token locally and if they don't. Now we need to use this token in our Elm code. So we need to say if the user's on a sign in route, we'll try and pull the token out of their URL. Else we'll see if they've got one in the flags that we can use instead. So in our init function here, we have this token where we, we pull out the token. We say if the URL is the sign in URL, we, we grab the token, else we do nothing. This nothing needs to change. Now we actually need to check our flags and see if we have a token there. So we can say case flags.stored token of, and if this is just a GitHub token, then we'll do exactly what we did up here. We're just going to wrap it in the token type that we created and then wrap it in adjust. If it's nothing though, then we want to return nothing. So you can see now that the stored token in the flags was this token D890. And now our new model is being set to D890. If we go to authenticate and we let it redirect us, you'll see now that the flags had the stored token as being D890, which is our old one, but the model is correctly using the new one from the URL. And now if we go to just the home page, we should see the new token being used. There's an optimization trick we can make here though. If you look at this code, you'll remember from a previous episode, we had code that looked like this or we have a value that's in a maybe and we're transforming it, that we can use maybe.map to do that too. So in the case that the URL isn't the sign-in URL, we're actually just gonna return the stored token, which will be nothing if it's not there, or it will be the actual token. So here we'll say maybe.map uh, token. And in fact, we don't need those brackets. And let me delete all that. And you see we're getting an error here over maybe.map. Of course, we're mapping to turn it into a token, but I need to tell it what to map, and this will be flags.stored token. So now we can say to set the user's token, if we're on the sign in URL, grab it from that. Else, try and get it from the stored token, and then we'll store it onto the model. And in the browser, you can still see that our token is being set correctly. 
We still have to deal with the case where we, after both of these, we don't have a token. It will be set to nothing. And we're going to start doing this in future episodes when we're going to start caring about the UI. So now using this token, we have the ability to know if a user is logged in or logged out. In the next episode, we'll start writing some code around that and also look at starting to communicate with the backend API.